Chairwoman McCarthy um, and Ranking Member Platts, it's an honor for me to be back here in this forum. Um, I, I um, speak based on my experience. I've been working in child welfare 40 years, including my service as Associate Commissioner of the Children's Bureau. Since I left the Children's Bureau, I've been focusing on assisting large child welfare systems attempt to improve their services. I want to talk a little bit about the, the background related to CAPTA and then offer four areas uh, that I think would be useful to consider in improving child welfare, uh, child protective services. CAPTA was originally enacted in 1974 to assure that all children uh, experiencing maltreatment had the protection of the state. CAPTA encouraged the development of systems that could receive reports of abuse and neglect, evaluate them, and provide protection for children. Uh, CAPTA has facilitated effectively the development of child protective systems across the country, as well as the development of knowledge and practice strategies to address this problem. Uh, over the years, CAPTA has been modified to include adoption, abandoned infants, and homeless children. Uh, it provides funding for prevention, research, and program development. Um, if we've heard the statistics already on maltreatment today, but I want to underscore several ideas. First, that neglect is the largest category of child maltreatment. Um, and secondly, I want to underscore that the data tells us that the children under four are the most vulnerable. They comprise 75% of the children who die, um, and they are unable to protect themselves and often invisible to the community because of their age. Uh, for the children at greatest risk, uh, child protection involves using the police power of the state to intervene in family life through a combination of assessment, decision-making, and service. Uh, protective service agencies operate to help families and children. The four areas of concern I'd like to speak to briefly are decision-making, um, are decision-making, interstate referrals for abuse and neglect, support for workers, and then finally, um, the issue of partnership with communities. Let me just say that we've made significant progress in terms of decision-making and developing decision-making protocols to guide child protective service workers, but we're not where we need to be. We now have the capacity through technology and um, other resources to begin to apply actuarial science to, to the predictive aspects of child protection. We needed an additional focus on decision making um, to improve the way judgments are made. Secondly, I want to speak to the question of interstate referrals. What we have found, I, I live and work in an area that involves two jurisdictions. If the child and the, if the child, the location of the event, and the perpetrator are not in the same jurisdiction, cases are likely to fall through the cracks. Because one jurisdiction will say, well, the child's not in our jurisdiction. Another jurisdiction will say, well, the event didn't occur here. So in a time of mobility, there's a real problem that cases get, reports get lost, and potential perpetrators don't get tracked. So that's an area that I would encourage you to look at. The third area I would encourage you to look at is really um, improving the capacity of supervisors to support frontline workers. This is very difficult work. Workers have, are exposed to difficult situations, to ch child trauma repeatedly. They are at risk of burnout. They are at risk of secondary trauma. And I think the most critical f thing that we can do in terms of that is strengthen supervisors' ability not only to manage work, 
but to, to support them. Um, the next area has to do with partnerships with communities. Um, child protection cannot be done by the Child Protective Service System alone. Communities shape the values and attitudes that we have toward children. A number of jurisdictions have been quite effective in sharing information about the conditions of children in their neighborhood and organizing the neighborhood to begin to create new messages and new structures to protect children and to create neighborhood ownership of the responsibility for child protection. So one of my recommendations is that you use the discretionary resources of CAPTA to promote more focus on neighborhood-based strategies to child protection. They will complement prevention strategies. They will also complement the work of the Child Protective Service Agency in attempting uh, to increase the safety of children. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity, and uh, um, we'll look forward to any questions you may have.